Hey guys, welcome back. Everyone's favorite weekly installment here. We're talking about two tamers talk. You guys might notice I'm on the wrong side of the table. Normally I'm over there, so I get the lucky privilege of being the, the one leading this today because guess who we have in the house, everybody? We got Basil. And so I was really excited about this. Thank you, Jesse, for uh, he's in the studio actually right now. He's doing all the button smashing over there. So thank him for that. Um, but we were talking about this and I, I told him, I was like, I want to have Basil. I want to do one with Basil because you did it last week. Yes, he got me last yeah. week and now yeah. Jeff has me now. He, yeah, so it's like, we, I we, wanted my turn. Yeah, we missed we missed Jeff and, and yeah. he missed me. So here we are. <laughs> no, first of all, man, thank you, by the way, for covering for me. I had a real bad week at work and you stepped in clutch and your, your guys' episode was awesome. And I think we got tons of great like fan response. So everybody in the comments, let me know that you guys want to hear Basil on more often than uh, Jesse or myself, because <laughs> we're also feeling that way. Because he comes in, it's great speeches and talks, and just yeah, it's really nice. Really and my, nice, and so. my brilliant insight. Yeah, we love it. I know, I love it. I was I was watching last week's episode, and it was nice because first of all, I wasn't there like reviewing my own um, episode that I did. Yeah. Right. And so I actually got to like learn, uh, uh, listen, like with, Oh wow. This is what it's like when it's brand new. It's <laughs> exciting. And yeah, no, your guys' insight between the especially with all the meta decks that you guys talked about. Um, it was, it was great. I loved it. So yeah. B BT 13 format has been, uh, it's been a treat so yeah. far and, uh, we got a lot more coming for it too. So absolutely. So no. Again, thank you by the way for coming in this week. Thank you for last week. I couldn't, you know, uh, thank you enough. But you're doing something tomorrow. Not not well tomorrow for the viewers. Yeah, tomorrow for the viewers. I it's, put it on the spot. Uh, we got a new uh, another regional coming up. You do. I, I wasn't planning on entering another one, but okay. I think another one before I had uh, qualified for nationals already. I think yep. I entered a few. So on Monday, I got an email from PPG, and it said, are you ready for regionals this weekend? Download oh. our app and, and send us your deck profile. So you didn't like, even know. You I was like, it, huh? oh, that's well, awesome. I'm free Saturday. I might as well give it a <laughs> shot. We'll see. So yeah, another regional coming up. Well, I would ask you what you're going to play for it, but I know it's secret. So. No, it's it's not secret. It's not? Okay. It's not, no. You want to talk um, about it? or I, I, I will. I'm deciding between three decks. Oh, okay. So you haven't, like, for sure uh -huh. decided. I'm deciding between Crossheart. Okay. Merva, Merva Crossheart. I think it's still you're very- You're great with that deck, too. I th I, thank you. I think it's still very strong. Yeah. I think the biggest reason I'm thinking about not running it yeah. is the Shine Gray Ruin mode. Got it. Um, if they are able to digivolve and swing that turn, yeah, which is possible because you Evo for free with Marcus. Yep, blanket minus ten k is impossible for me to deal with because yeah. cro everything below Merva is is it's just wiped right is away. Ten k. Yep, yep. Even the cross five is ten k exactly. Yeah. So you can't you cannot do anything besides play Merva and nothing else. Um, you don't so want to do that like super spicy tech of uh, putting in the st one tie. Where you get every all your Digimon get plus one thousand. I have you don't not, want to like reconfigure your entire Merva I have cross not, deck. Just I have for not that. thought about that, and <laughs> that is something to consider. You heard it here first. Um, the second deck I'm thinking about is Security Control. Okay, I think I've never really seen you play Security Control. I, I've messed around with it a bit. Yeah. Um, Ryan, friend of the channel, is yep, a yep. Security Control uh, savant. He's always great with it. He always. has. I've been sort of under his tutelage. In that regard, yeah, I think it's really strong. This format. The only thing with protection from uh, chaos degradation is the new Alphamon. Yeah, um, and so all all of the burst modes hit security options. That makes sense. Yeah, um, really? the royal the royal knights hit security options. Well, it's nice because you don't trigger like the that. like deletions as well, right? Yeah. Like you know, ruin like, mode. Ruin mode's such a menace. You don't yeah. hit that. Ch Chaos deletion. Dig and Lonk, I think, are both very strong cards this format. Yeah. yeah. Thinking about that and Shadow Seraphi as well is very oh, strong. Oh, yeah, I love Shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this format. Is there a reason why you're thinking about not doing that? You know, uh, security control loses to itself. I agree. Which yeah. which I'm not too thrilled about. So it's like, well, yeah, my hand is five kill options, yeah, and I play yeah. one a turn and hope I win that way. Um, so that's a reason I'm not thinking about that, as well as a long tournament day. Playing, that, playing yes. a control deck is something I think is unwise strategically. Going to e time, tying yeah. every round. Yeah, even here. though the deck is strong, having those long, grindy matches yep. for nine rounds is not something I, I'm, I would be looking forward to, although yeah. I do think it is strong. Yeah. And then the last deck I'm thinking about is Mirage Galgamon. 
Ooh. I think Mirage is really, really strong this yeah. format. Yeah. I think there are a couple of cards that go in it that answer the meta really well, mm -hmm. as well as it's something that swings six times in one turn with jamming. Which that that That's sounds it. that yeah, sounds you got good me, to me real good with that. What was it like two <laughs> weeks ago when our some of our test games? Yeah. You were just wiping me with that. That was insane. Yeah, it's uh it's really strong, and so I'm thinking about those three. Uh, I'll probably decide Friday night. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that seems to be I, that, the, that seems to be the good way to go. <laughs> well, I'm I'm not gonna tell you what to play because it is ultimately your decision. But I will say, not that I don't think you can play security control. To me, you've never seemed like a defensive player. Yeah. So I think if you start shifting your mindset and take away from the success that you've had in all of your past events, you're gonna lose to yourself. Yeah. Again, I'm just my two cents, and you're obviously playing this event, and I'm not. <laughs> you know, and you've been doing way better at events than I have lately. Um, so I don't, I don't want to be the well, one to get in your head or anything. But and that, that was the other thing I was thinking. I was like, this could be also like prove to myself that I can win with something besides just yeah. going face, like. But I, real, I get that. Uh, I get like, that. But I can I can play control too. But oh no no, that's absolutely. just a, that's just absolutely. a weird you, ego trip. You can play control. <laughs> you can definitely play control. I think I didn't mean that like you can't do it. No, I just yeah, meant like it's just... the way I know you play is you're always just an aggressive player. Yeah, you know, and it's always fun to play with you. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but it's just one of those like I think you should stick with that strength. Yeah, I think and so. I, like if it was up to me. I would say you play Mirage Gagelman. I I think I think it's strong, man. The reason why I, is because it's it's that combination that I've been seeing out of you, and I, especially when I play against Ryan, Ryan especially this way too. It always seems like when I play against you and I play against Ryan that you guys always have an answer for everything in the hand, <laughs> right? Like you guys construct your deck so well that this one of, two of, level four is your answer to this and this is your answer to that. And it's always like, okay, well, I don't have any moves to do because you're just going to have an answer for it. So what I like about the Mirage Geogamon is that it's aggressive, like, you know, mm -hmm. like the styles of decks that you play. Well, also you have answers to things and you have some elements of control that's not completely taking away from what your deck does. That, yeah. That's my two cents. Well, uh, much, much to consider. We'll definitely have you on for a follow up and let yeah, me sure. figure out and you know get <laughs> get what you play. Hopefully, we see you on the screen here. Yeah, I oh, can't wait right. to see that. So, um, no, let us everyone in the comments jump below. Wish them good luck. We're all pulling for you. We're definitely representing hard. So, let's dive into a regional. Speaking sure. of regionals, and I guess my first question is is why aren't you going to play Blue Flare? That was what was first place here, right? Yeah. This was, uh, well, this was the last tournament of the uh, play exhaustive and long T uh, EX4 format. Ah, and I, I think uh, I think Blue Flare and EX4 was, yep. I mean, if not the best deck, I one, feel one, like one of the, the better decks, deck. uh, especially coming out of that format. Oh, yeah. Um, and the, the interesting about this list is we're down to two of the Setter Kiriha. Yeah, I Which is... I don't hate that, man. I really don't because you have the dual tamer that does so much work in this deck. It gains you memory, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it goes back to the traditional deck style building where you kind of only play two memory setters anyways. Yeah. All right, unless you're, like, really trying to get the green Mimi set up, like in the grandest days where you would want three maybe, and even then a lot of people prefer two. So it takes that mindset, but then you're also being able to recycle everything from trash with the dual tamer. Yeah. So it's part of the reason like I like it, and this is kind of the direction that I ended up falling towards. Like my list wasn't perfectly here yet because I just mm -hmm. couldn't let go of Metal Grandma and X Antibody. Yeah. I love that and Blue Flare, but it was super close to this. So I, I know I love this list. This is a yeah, great list. I, I dig this. Ten uh ten rookies I'm a big fan of. Yeah, I it's think blue I think going for the Z Gray over yeah. the Kuzahuman makes more sense to me. Just, I agree. Just I agree. because I feel like, like I said on the last week's episode, I think the Kuzahuman's more of a win more. Um, I like the Kuzahuman for sure, but what I found is I personally like just straight up Kaiser Nail in Blue Flare, right? Yeah, so I'm kind of more leaning into that than maybe Ice Wall and Sorai. Yeah, this moved, right? this moved a more de defensive rather more defensive. than uh, rather that's than how that. That's how Blue Flare had been winning in the past, and that store championship that I was this close to winning and lost to the mirror <laughs> with the exact same cards was playing Sorai, yeah. was playing, um, I think I even played Innocence Blizzard. I've seen some lists play that. Maybe mm -hmm. not so much nowadays, but the, I think having the nice like defensive spice in this, not spice, just defensive touch is the word I should say, yeah. in security when you need it or just a good move, especially because Sorai is so cheap to play only four and sometimes you're at four from your tamer setup right. right or your blazing memory boost or whatever so 
I, 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 I really do like this list. I think it's yeah. a great list. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, first place at the Regionals Play TCG. Um, let's move on to the second place. And I think this is a name that most of us know that won. Yeah. I know I have been following his YouTube channel for a very long time. I always love watching his deck lists. I think he's a great internet personality. Uh, this is what, Huang Zero's Huang Machine Zero, Drum Yeah. And uh, he, we'll, we'll talk about it now, obviously. Yeah. But he did a long uh, breakdown of this deck kind of immediately after the tournament. Gotcha. Um, is, is it on his YouTube? It's, I on, it's on his YouTube channel. And so shameless plug. Well, I guess not shameless because we're not affiliated with him in any way. Yeah. Um, go check out his YouTube because he does an awesome breakdown of this deck. And I remember when I saw him post that he won with Machine Dermot, I was like happy for him. Yeah. And uh, a couple of things I, like his, his breakdowns more in depth, but a couple of things I just have to note because they're so yeah. uh, exciting to me is uh, he plays the uh, the black hybrid not only as a way to have hybrid for game, yeah, but also he talked about the matchup he was most worried about was hunters, and yeah. so he played the hybrid to go over an analog man to get rid to of get it. rid of it, so that oh, when he so played cool. Machine Dramon, the superior mode had nothing to tuck it under. Yeah, so yeah. having only the one source, so then he could obviously block the attack then and without getting tucked under because he has Dang. the. Uh, the uh, EX4 Metal Gray, and then the two Andromon. That's such like a smart move. It's a reason to play that because, yeah, yeah you're right. I mean, uh, Jesse unfortunately knows too because I feel like that was like right at the end of him playing Machine Dermon was when I was playing Hunters when that first came out. <laughs> yeah. And I was able to do Just that to him. And he knows exactly what that is. So, But to me, it's like when I heard you talking about this before we were started recording, I was like, okay, so he's playing it as a two of. It's just a one of just so. Just a one. I mean, it makes sense, you know. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like I'm just too scared to yeah, not the, play a two the, of the, in this. The three uh, black memory boost and yeah. then uh, four analog man. You're gonna cycle through uh, your deck relatively quick. That's true. That's He's true. also um, on ten rookies, which is I only used to run eight. When yeah, I that's machine. Blue flare and machine Dramon to me are decks, and everyone knows me on the channel. I love a lot of level threes just because I'm scared of bricking. Yeah. Um, but those two decks, is in particular, machine Dramon and blue flare, are decks that I easily go to eight. Where I'm yeah. just like, don't even think about it. It's easy for me yeah. to do that. So I definitely agree with what you're saying there. But uh, yeah. Machine Dramon getting second is awesome. That's yeah. I mean, yes, it was an EX4 set, so we'll see how Machine Dramon does when we start getting some great results. Yeah. And you'll have to let us know if you play against any Machine Dramon. I will. I'll keep my eyes wide open. Yeah, but third place, uh, War Gray. It's never going anywhere. War Gray. We're all yeah. used to red, black, black War Gray Mon. Yes. Um, not cool and list. not not just black War Gray, but also opting for two of the uh, raid the black. War Gray, yes. the Raid uh, War Gray, which is interesting. Yes, it's a it's a cool card, man. It's definitely a cool card. How they do that um, with the with the Raid stuff, and it's kind of a cool little split there. I've been really digging like six level sixes myself, and it's fun seeing the two two twos that Black War Gray does a lot of. But uh, I'm surprised Yuya kind of made a comeback. I kind of seen this like decline in the Yuya as the tie became the preferred. Yeah. So it's it's cool. Let's, I yeah, think it's the, cool. The, the, the Yuya, I don't know what uh, options they were scared of necessarily in this uh, in this EX4 format. Yeah. But um, obviously looking for a bunch of DP with the uh, the Turbo, Greymon, yep. the Promo Agumon. Yep. Um, and then the ties, huge DP. No oh, and... And instead of the uh, the one to Evo Metal X, the uh, the old Metal X. So a lot of DP, a lot of damage, a lot of aggression, and, uh, and no fear into security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 a cool list for sure. You know, I don't know if they maybe would have done better if they just committed to four cool boys instead of the UES. Yeah, I'm I'm not an expert on that for sure. So let us know in the comments what you think. Yeah, or if they went like uh, Gaiomons instead of the uh, War Graves. Instead of the yeah, especially because they're kind of doing that aggressive package, but then they kind of maybe held themselves back with the raid. But they got third, man. I didn't yeah. play, so well, it's like, yeah, well what can played, I say, well, right? Well played, well played. Um, obviously that must have been there for some sort of match. And maybe they just really wanted to get rid of D Reaper since uh, you know, <laughs> the mother, right? I sure. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, and then uh, um, fourth place War Gray again. is Black War Gray again. This one is filling up your screen a lot more. I'm sure you guys are noticing. It yeah. seems to be a lot more pieced out, right? Yeah, they uh, same uh, same exact rookie lineup. They went for yeah. two of the security attack Greymon. They added one of the new Metal Gray X. Yep, yep. 
Um, they also added the uh, BT-8 Metal Gray, which makes a lot of sense. But the same level six lineup. Yeah. Same rookie lineup. Same Tamer lineup, I just realized, too. Same Tamer lineup. Yeah. Almost the same option lineup. They put in a couple of red boosts. Red boosts, yeah. Never hurt nobody. But, uh, almost, I mean, I, I, I wonder if they're... Uh, in cahoots, these two. Yeah. Be very similar. That, lists. It'd be very Even down to the, the EX1 Greymon. Yep, yep. Yeah, so that was um, uh, the uh, regionals by Play TCG North America. So now we have a couple deck lists from regionals of the TAC games, TAK, in uh, Oceana. Yeah, now we're in BT13. Now we're in some BT13 stuff. So I think it's safe to say we can finally stop talking about EX4. <laughs> unless I just have to keep bringing up Raymon for no good reason, right, guys? <laughs> uh, but let's talk about this first place, man. Shine Gray Burst Mode. Yeah. I mean, or is it Shine Gray Ruin Mode? Shine Gray. <laughs> you know? So my question is, is remember how, what was it, BT12, EX4, whatever, when we started first getting the pieces mm -hmm. and the eggs were, everyone just said red. Everyone mm -hmm. said play red eggs. Now it's play yellow eggs. Well, is it because the Coralmon is so good or is it what changed? Well, I think, and I'm not a Shine Gray expert necessarily, yeah. but I have been toying around with the deck because yep. if the deck's good, I'll probably like it. Especially, yeah, if you, and like it helps the regionals, right? Because yeah. you want to learn the deck to... right. And so one of the reasons I saw people going to the yellow Coromon is they weren't really swinging with their Greymons all too often. Yeah, you don't draw. Because don't, they really yeah. just want to, they have, there's eight Marcuses in every Shine Gray deck and you just want to swing with those. Yep. So you weren't really getting a ton of value off of the draw Coromon. Mm -hmm. But the other reason I was seeing people play the yellow Coromon is as another rookie in the deck, they were playing the BT13 Kudamon. Which ah. searches three for a yellow tamer and a yellow vaccine. Yep, and, and every Digimon every Digimon in this list is a vaccine. The only one that couldn't be searched would be the red Augu X, because it's right. red, but it's still a vaccine. Yeah, right? and that, that that was the thing I was gonna point up on the rookie lineup is there are playing the red Agu X, which yep. can't Evo in raising. Yep. Yep. So they're really relying must... on, you know, well, I guess they have still ten uh well, that can. Four, eight, ten. Yeah, 10, 10 and then 13 rookies all together. Yeah, I think, with that I think it's totally fine, as well as um, Brian, I'll talk about again, who's yeah. the Shine. He's been playing Shine. It's like we like him or something. He's been playing Shine since uh, we didn't even have another good Marcus to play. I think he played Shine in BT2, if I remember right. <laughs> there you go. And he would, even if he had the Searcher Agumon, mm -hmm. he wouldn't put it in raising. He would just hard play it. Yeah, because if yeah. you don't find Marcus, your game is is hard to win. And so he would do that, and then the next turn, he'd have the Agu X follow-up. Got it, got and it. And so I think the raising area is not so important early game. Yeah. So I think that probably is part of the reason. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But it's the core of your deck. Everything else makes sense. Uh, one, ruined mode, and two, burst mode. I think I've seen a lot of that. It's a cool split. I really like it. I think it makes sense. I could see two to one the other way, or... Uh, uh, but I think having both of those options makes the most sense to me. Mm -hmm. And then everything else are just uh, maxing out all the best cards that they got. And do you, then do you think only one sunrise, one, like one rise gray X? Do you think that's enough? Because like mine, I love rise gray X so much that I would love to play five if I could. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, is it? I mean, obviously he won. He got first place. Yeah. He's so. got he's got eight level fives. Yeah. Which yeah. So I, it's think, I think good number. makes sense. You could go. Two to two on the uh, the Rise Gray and the Rise X. You need yeah. four of the BT13 one. That makes sense. That's the best one. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I could see, yeah, going, only going to one. I think the uh, the rationale being it evos for four uh, on, on a Greymon. So yeah, if you, you have the Setter Marcus, you're going to be passing the turn. Yeah, and you really need to keep it your turn. You want to keep it your turn with the going from four to five and then swing with the Marcus going to level six for free. I yeah. Think makes the most sense. So the rise gray has high roll potential, but also has uh, a big drawback in that. I see. I see. But yeah. Amazing list. No, so it, it makes sense to me. The real question is, do you think we're going to get geo Greymon X antibody? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> no, the, oh, I'm just kidding. The real question is, um, I know a lot of people are talking about restriction lists and, and upcoming potential 
to remove things because so many people think I, I see both, right? I see so many people where they say shine gray is the dominant deck. Shine uh -huh. gray is dominating everything. But then I literally see people that are like, it loses to itself because it bricks. Yeah. I think the, I think the question that's going to have to be is, uh, we're going to have to play out a couple regionals and see, and see I what mean, happens. If it's, if it's eight of 16 in top 16, yeah. then we should talk about it. But, People were talking about restricting it before the set even dropped. Yeah. Like, relax. Guys. I know, I know. And it's like, I feel like it was strong overseas, but I don't know if it was dominant, right? Like, I don't think, I thought yeah. it was a good balance. Well, and then they already put it to one in the Ultimate Cup. And so. Oh, did they really? I missed they, that. They did. So. Oh. What, what card did they put to one? Uh, Punch Marcus. The, uh, Punch Marcus. The uh, BT, uh, BT12, the. Uh, yeah, when you swing your Evo. Yeah, yeah, the four cost market. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and Sunrise Buster's already won anyway, Sunrise so it's not won. like, you know, it's dominant in that regards too. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think only time will tell. Yeah, only time. And it's it's hard to predict what Bandai will uh, put to one. Do you feel like you, know? you have a good answer to Shine Gray in your upcoming regionals with your with your build, with your setup, or do you yeah, feel I like think, that's one of those? I think, I think some decks can outrun it. Yeah, I that's kind of hard. I think Alphamon is a good meta answer to this. Alphamon. And that's that's what I was thinking about as well. Yeah. And I think uh I think there are options into it, but yeah. uh whether it's too strong or not, I'm I'm not I'm not quite sold yet. Yeah. Yeah. If I had to restrict if I had to answer today, restrict it or not, I would say not. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not calling for any restrictions mm -hmm. and I'm not saying it needs to be. I agree with you that time will tell, right? But I was just curious what mm -hmm. you know what your chatter is because Yeah. And then uh, second place, I think, is the <laughs> exact <Grand> same <laughs> deck. <laughs> yeah. And but this, there are some changes, right? Yeah. Right? This is uh, this list is uh, a little bit closer to something that, that I would run, mainly yeah. the uh, reinforcing memory boost. Yeah, I kind of like that split. It's makes so a lot of interesting. Sense. I think deck, Death X is really strong, this format. I mean, you can put Death X in any deck, yeah. right? But... I think Solar Mon makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of play cost reduction. That's the Royal Knight deck. Is it enough as a one-up, though? Well, you don't want to see it every game because no. all your Geogays Evo for three on a Solar yeah. Mon. Yeah. Um, you but you want to stop enough? that Belfamon. You want to stop that Royal Knights. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, Anyone's, no, anyone's still playing blue flare and, and and this is a red base deck too with the egg versus yeah, we the yellow the base one. right so was that what made them get second place versus first i don't know i'm not an expert on that but there's you know there's some interesting choices in here for sure like they kind of did that two one or two split of you're talking about the other rise gray but then they added um ex4 rise gray into the mix yeah. So it's pretty interesting to see that. A little up. bit more board control. Yeah, yeah. It seems like this might be a little bit more like defensive version. Yeah. You know, the only reason I would be hesitant to play red memory boost is the fact that it would bottom deck your Marcuses. Yeah. Whereas reinforcing, you wouldn't bottom deck it. You could, oh, it's I like... mean, you could honestly reveal two Marcuses. Yeah. Put the five cost in security, put the four in your hand. <laughs> right. And that would be like a, you know, win win, right? Yeah, but put, puts your opponent in a pickle. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I definitely like the reinforcing. Still on the fence about red, but you know, I, I make sense for searching everything. Yeah. Nope. Coolest. So with it being the top two, is it time to restrict it now? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but. Let's talk about this third place deck because this is something you've been talking a little bit about and something yeah. that uh, you definitely kicked my ass with the other day. So yeah, Mirage. I would love I to think... hear your take on this. Yeah, Mirage. This looks uh, this looks very similar to uh, the deck list that I have been running. Yeah. Uh, interesting things to note is uh, Vimon. Yeah. As a, as a rookie. As a rookie. So yep. just uh, another way to search uh, your blue tamers. Yeah. Um, I I moved a I I think my list only has the one blue memory boost kind of for the same reason you talked about with Marcus yeah don't want to bottom deck uh, my Thomases yep yep he has a three three split on the Thomas I think I have a four two or something like that yeah you, you're not playing the best Thomas ever in the game remember when that card came out and like okay oh geez. I don't I was not there for when this Thomas came out <laughs> but right now I think I think it's very very strong it's a right now it's so, awesome yeah, a yeah. really good turn one yeah. drop and then it you're able to proc your wand you yeah. with it but then also the amount of times you can unsuspend with this deck is ridiculous yeah and that uh just adds in another one um well it's so funny to me like so this is me asking bandai please i'm begging you uh give me more black mirage galgamon stuff 
Ooh. Because when this Thomas was out, I would build, especially with like BT5, when we had, uh, that was when Black Melga Garumon was a lot of fun. But we got like a whole Black uh, Mock Algamon, the Black oh, Algamon, wow. right? And we had fun with that. And I would try to do Thomas and unsuspend those because they'd have jamming. They'd have yeah, jamming yeah. and reboot. And it was just a really fun combo. It didn't win anything ever. I, <laughs> I promise. It's way too slow. Your opponent never had eight cards in your hand back then. So it's like, this reminds me so much of that, but so much more refined. Obviously, it's the blue. It's what the color was meant to be, yeah. right? But it would be it would be sick if you know I could figure out a, a better way to do that black version for this. No, man. I mean, this is cool. I've, is there anything you're seeing on this list that you're like, maybe I should think more about that card in in my deck? Well, I I uh, opted away from the full moon meteor impact. I was trying that as well as the EX four eight cost blue option. Uh, great um, Navalance. No, it's um, EX four. Right? EX four. It's it's the Zed Guru Ruman option. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that uh, that bottom deck's a level six or higher, and then bounces to level fours. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not really a wide format, so I wasn't worried about that too much. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And then the reason I went away from the full moon meteor impact is because you're going to, on the burst mode turn, you're yeah. going to only gain back that two. So it doesn't really work at that point. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I just think this of this deck is a, a completely offensive deck. Yeah. And so don't even mess around with uh, a defense other than that's what that's what I was kind of telling you earlier, uh, right? Other like, than Sora, yeah, just, which is just sort of like uh, Sora is too wall. good not to put in, right? Like Sora and I, I mean, I'll, I talk a lot of that, crap. That was yeah. the, that was the other thing I wanted to mention was not no ice no wall. ice wall, yeah. which is yeah, that's, that's crazy. You could almost take out those full moon full moon meteors, just do one ice wall and one more Sora. Yeah, I, I can see that completely. You know, and then that would make so much sense. The blue, I agree. With the blue boost it's tough because you want it, but at the same time you don't want to bottom deck the tamers. Yeah, so. Would Hammer Spark be better? Yeah, you could do. You could do I, I don't that, know, but you. I, I mean, can't wait to see your list, man. I know <laughs> we're gonna get that deck profile film, then it's gonna be one of the coolest deck profiles, and then I'll make the black version of it. That will uh, <laughs> maybe that'll be the next April Fool's joke or something like that. Because we'll I'm thinking of this Thomas, which was featured in my in the April Fool's video. Which if you haven't seen that, go watch. It's hilarious. <laughs> if I if I you know could toot my own horn. Uh, yeah, so this that was the third place. Let's dive into the fourth, which was black or gray. Yeah. Well, I hesitate to even call it that because we've got <laughs> one war gray X, yep. one raid war gray, one guy Oman, one black war gray, and two black war gray X. So this it's is... sort of like the uh, the potpourri war yeah. gray Oman. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of um, a cho like a chosen ones deck almost. Like, yeah. Obviously, yeah. the threes and Tons the fours are a little bit more. Like closer like that, but it's a lot of one ofs. Like this yeah, is how one I would... tie, one yeah. Yuya, one Omni X, one Blitz Omni, one of each level six, one BT eight Metal Gray. It's yeah. just like they're all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So almost like a toolbox style approach to the war. So gray. the question is, is and again, fourth place is outstanding. I'm mm -hmm. not knocking him at all. I, if you're watching, man, I promise it's not an insult. Do you think the deck is better to be more refined? Because I know my personality and my like mentality when I play is I'm like, I'm going to go for one main strategy and then I'm going to have a backup. Yeah. Whereas this is, you know, one, two, three, four, five different level sixes. Right. And obviously, like you were saying, a toolbox, it's good to have answers for everything. A lot of the war gray stuff synergizes very well together. So it's not like you're stretching too far. Yeah. But, you know, I just, what do you think? I mean, well, well, the interesting thing is like, okay, I'm into a black war gray mod. Yep. So now war gray X is dead in my hand. You know, the raid war gray is kind of dead in the hand. Yep. And then it's like, okay, I'm into a raid war gray. Now my guy Oman and my black war gray, black X. War gray X's are dead in the hand. So yeah, I wonder yeah. how many times that happened. Yeah. Um, obviously with, uh, with, uh, cool boys and two red boosts and, mm -hmm. Or draw Coromon and X Antibody and all that. You're you're gonna be yeah. you're gonna be seeing a lot of these cards. So basically, yeah. I guess the idea is by the time you're into your level five, mm -hmm. you have your choice of which yeah. level six uh, makes the most sense at that given time. Yeah, and, you know, I kind of like the mindset though of like yes, like you were talking about if you're at uh, Raid War Gray and you don't have War Gray X, you you don't have the next move unless it's Omnimon, and yeah. sometimes you're not quite yet ready to do Omnimon. So I kind of like the mindset of forcing myself 
to ignore the stack that's already been built and focus on my next stack mm -hmm. or focus on more tame replacement or more options. Like if you get the raid war gray set out and you have two memory left, just Hades Force, you know, if, if it's the right time, right? Sure. Hades Force, you swing with the War Grey anyways, and then your turn passes, and then it's like, then you don't have to think about the Black War Grey X being dead in hand. Yeah. Right? So it's one of those things that's, you know, it can go either way, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, a very interesting list. Very I like interesting. it. I like it. All right. So that is it for regionals, guys. We're, we're moving on from the regionals talk. We are doing the segment that when I was watching you and Jesse last week, I was like, please don't talk about the Devas and the uh, <laughs> and the four sovereigns without me, guys. Like I, I was already sad I was missing last week, and you guys were nice and saved we, it for we me. We knew how much you loved them, God, and we I decided so much. we got to save these. Yeah. Yeah, so let's start up at the very, very top, I think. Let's start with um, – is that screw up the order real bad if I start at the level 7? Fang I don't Long think Mon. So. I think we can go right and do it. So I will say I do think in an earlier segment I called the secret rares. I mean, my initial guess was Fang Long Mong, and mm -hmm. I think the other one was Grace Nova Mon, um, just because I thought it was going to be two level sevens. And I, I don't think ever once Digimon has done two level sevens as the two secrets. So I was definitely wrong because it was Death the X Melga and... X. Oh. oh. Death you're right. Or you can. You're right. You're right. There is. There was a time. There was a time. Okay. We have all of the secret rares. We have them right here in beautifully. Jesse's pretty case. I just want to get fingerprints all over this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so Fang Along I was right about, but I had no idea what it was going to do. I just thought mm. it was going to be it. But it's it's an awesome card. I'm a, I will go on record and say this for everybody in this room and the audience. The, the Four Sovereigns and the Devas are my actual favorite Digimon group. <laughs> I know I say I, everyone's laughing at me. That's fine. But like as far as groups go, I like them more than the Royal Knights. I like them more than the Olympus 12. I love the uh, Devas and stuff. I just like the like lore behind it, like the Chinese mythology of the... Um, you know, you have Ebun Wamon. The Zodiac. The, yeah, yeah. And then you have the Chinese Zodiac for the 12 Devas and stuff. And they're also referred to as, like, in Buddhist uh, uh, speak, it's the 12 Heavenly Generals. So there's all sorts of cool stuff that I really like what Digimon did when they came out with these characters and stuff. But Fang Longmon, pretty cool level 7. So I think that one we got pretty early on in the reveals before we started seeing the Devas, before we started seeing the Four Sovereigns. So we weren't really sure how it was going to work because... The ability is on play when attacking by returning up to four cards of the Deva or four Sovereigns straight from your trash to the bottom of the deck. For each card returned, all of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 4K for the turn. Pretty cool. So, you know, you're, you first see that and you're like, okay, so you're going to return one, two, three cards because, again, we hadn't seen any of the Devas when this first got revealed. So you're like, okay, so I'll do a minus 12K. That's pretty cool. When attacking for each of your Digimon with the four Sovereign traits, trash top card of your opponent's security stack. All turns, this Digimon isn't affected by the effects of your opponent's Digimon. So what this made me think of was the four great dragons deck from EX3. Yeah. Like, and it's just so similar because you wanted those four great dragons in trash, which I guess that's a funny parallel because Azulong is both a sovereign and a four great dragon. Right. But you know what I'm saying? It's like... And then we started seeing the rest of the deck. We started seeing how many Davas are actually going to be played. Yeah. Like, literally you might not play any threes or fours in this deck because my first thought was we, uh, was it two weeks ago? We talked about the Akilamon with the Indomitable. And I was like, okay, Zakalmon's going to be uh, green, right? Because I kind of assumed it was going to follow that line, but it's red and purple. Yeah. It's so cool. I did, this, is, <laughs> this is one of those decks where well, I have two things to say. First, yeah. I have no idea how this is going to play because oh, there yeah, is yeah, yeah. one of the, I forget which one of the cards it was, but it says, Put this card in an empty space in your breeding area. Yes. So, so is this going to be our first no egg? That's the point Digimon I wanted to make. Deck? Yeah. Yeah. That's the point I want to make because I think all of the Devas in this set, right? We we have gotten some Devas in the past. We've gotten um, Vajramon and Purple from BT5. We got the uh, Sandiramon, the snake one, I think is the name, um, in BT8, I think as another. It was the same stat line as the Skolmera. We've gotten in Telamon a couple times before. So we've gotten Davis in the past. Yeah. And so first I was like, okay, you're going to go back and you're going to add in all those Davis into your deck. And, you know, somehow it's going to be some sort of turbo, whatever like that. But they're literally giving us like Pajram, uh, Pajiramon. Pa pa Pajiramon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On play, draw one. 
which this one might be my favorite because I feel like you're going to want to draw a bunch of cards. All the security attack stuff is insane, like this red one is. Um, on play, draw one. Then you may play one Digimon with a David trait with a different name. So it also reminds me of the Royal Knights stuff that we just got, right? And from your battle area in trash into an empty space in your breeding area without playing the cost. On deletion, if your opponent has a tamer, gain one memory. So inheritable, four sovereigns, god beast, security attack plus one. So that's that's insane. So and a lot of the I'm not gonna spend time talking about every single Deva as much as I want to. I'll save everybody the pain. But they all have similar effects, and then their inheritable is kind of based on the color. Right? Like yeah. all the red ones have security attack plus one as the inheritable. But they're all like on play, draw one, which is awesome for the deck because four gray dragons was really suffering from not having that like draw power and only having you know you wouldn't play four of each four gray dragon so it was hard to commit to but you're absolutely right like you're not gonna play an egg because you have to have an empty space in the breeding area yeah well and then the the other thing that i'm worried about is when you said oh this is just like the four great dragons yeah and it's like people played that for like Two weeks. People and then they put it away. to make it work, myself included. I think this is going to be better than Four Grey Dragons, but it's going to be like a very similar play style, and I'm I'm all for it, man. I think what it all really, it. I think what it really depends on is if it does go to the kind of like that Mega Zoo play in the play, play in the battle area kind of style. It depends on a how good are the the blast digivolves. Yes, because there's three. And then, is there a cheap Deva level five that we can just throw on the field and then be like, all right, yeah. if you swing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be into a level six and yeah. activate its effect. Well, so right now, I know we have the five cost purple snake one from a couple sets ago. I want to say yeah. like BT10, BT9, BT10. I think it's BT10 that the snake Deva yeah. was out. So that's a five drop. So that's kind of a cheap yeah, play. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. But it seems like when if you hard play these to draw a card, then you put one in the raising area. You'll have that one that you promote out of raising right away, and it's free. Yeah. Right? I mean, I it, guess we'll have to get some clarification on yeah. that, but that's how I'm interpreting it. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea, yeah. and I'm, but I'm, I'm excited. It's another one of those things where it's like, I hope it lasts beyond EX5 because it's a really cool idea. What is that tamer, that um, white tamer, Jinrai, Ginrai, where you could, like, promote out of the raising area and then, like, counter that same turn, if I'm not mistaken? I'd have to re-read re, 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 that is a thought that I'm having right now because mm -hmm. all of these ace cards have counter. So let's yeah. talk about Ebon Wamon ace, the, the turtle of the north, as I'll say. Um, hand counter, blast Digivolve, on play when Digivolving. For each of your Digimon with the Deva for Sovereign's traits, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Then all of your opponent's Digimon don't unsuspend during your opponent's next unsuspend phase. Uh, and then on deletion, delete one of your opponent's suspend Digimon. It's pretty cool. I like about these ace cards that... that there's seven drops. So, yes, they're going to be a little bit weaker to option cards and stuff, you know, and you're going to have to worry about those overflow. But they all have, like, pretty good on-deletion effects. That, that was that was the thing I was interested about yeah. because it's like, okay, Ace is this really strong ability going yep. to it on your opponent's turn. Yep. Here's the drawback is this uh, overflow. But then they gave them on-deletions. Yep. So that's interesting yeah. because it's like, well, okay, my opponent gets the benefit of all this memory, yeah. but I get the benefit of here's my on deletion. Yeah, like the Azu Longmon on deletion, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest level. Yeah. Like that's insane. And then it has a pretty good counter as well. And they're all pretty strong like that. So it's it's really interesting. And I love the like color palette that we're getting a wide variety of colors because I, I didn't know what colors the deck was going to be. And then when we saw the uh, the, the level seven, the Fang Long. Yeah. Um, he's yellow, so then it was that was pretty I interesting. Smell Chimeramon. I you know it. You know it. You know it. <laughs> no, I'm I'm being the the uh Zakaomon's really cool too. Again, red, purple, best colors in the game. Sorry guys. All on uh, one. <laughs> on deletion, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest DP. That's pretty cool. When Digivolving, when attacking, by deleting one Digimon with 6k or less, or the David trait, you gain security attack plus one. So the cow is going to be super aggressive with all those red sources underneath it, especially if you use Chimera to tuck underneath or whatever, too. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't know what level fours you're going to play to really get the Chimera to trigger right now, you know? So it's going to be pretty interesting there. But 
I'm super excited about this. Um, I'm all in on this deck. I don't care how good or bad it is. It's the only thing I'm going to play until I find my next thing. But So I, I cannot wait for this set. And I think the last reveal we'll talk about is Leopardmon X Antibody because he's the coolest Royal Knight anyways, and now he gets an X <laughs> Antibody. Um, that's that's all I really got to say about it. The effect is cool, but I don't know if I'm going to play it, actually. It's, it's the same effect as the yeah. Leopardmon, but you just yeah. do it again. Just do it again, so... so. That's uh, that's all I got, guys. Let us know in the comments what you think about these EX5 reveals. We're super excited. I know we got tons more coming out. I'm sure we'll have some bombshell drop from the time that we recorded this Wednesday night to this drop in Friday. And uh, I can't wait to see whatever uh, Dawn and Dusk Digimon um, game that we some cool things that we missed. And I'll talk about that next week. But yeah. All right. Well, let's do a fun segment. Right? I think Jesse went first last week, so I think you get to go first. Yeah, I'm, I'll go first. This is my second ever card of the week. I'm so excited you're doing this. My card of the week is Sorai. Sorai. We saw it come up in the Blue Flare and Mirage Galgamon. I think it's a card that is really, really strong this format. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are swinging without sources right now. So oh, I yeah. was talking about the... Royal Knights deck. Yeah. Obviously, when on the Omnimon turn, you're playing a bunch of Royal Knights with no sources. Um, Marcuses can never have sources because they're never tamers that you promote. The um, the Belfamon deck. Uh, if the uh, sleep mode has a uh, on the second turn, yeah, and it can be affected by effects, you can strip the rage mode. So that it loses that ability to swing twice for four That's checks. So That's what drew me when you were talking about that before we started recording. Of you were like, yeah. So I was like, yeah, sorry, it was good. I know that. Yeah. But you're like, wait a second, the sleep mode matchup. Yeah, and all of the Gizmons never have sources either because yeah. they can't digivolve. Makes so, so much there's sense. a lot of stuff that's attacking you without sources. Yeah, and so putting that in as not only a strong defensive option to strip inheritables, yeah, but also as a way to like, uh. I'm one turn away from killing you on a big Mirage Galgamon burst mode turn. So cool. That is like another, like if you ice wall Sorai, yeah. it's like you're seeing next turn for sure. Just like sure. we were talking about with that deck list where it's like they weren't playing that ice wall. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to put ice wall in my deck. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like all the blue decks that I've shot in the past, besides like maybe one or two, like one seriously, one is a joke. I put ice wall in it, but everything else I hadn't before. And it's just, you know, rooms tight, but it's like when you're like in these grindy, like regional type games, you, you got to put ice wall. You got to find that ice. wall. Yeah, it's a 49 card deck with ice wall. It's a 48 card deck. If you play a death X, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, just fit those in and fit the rest in. Yeah. So. Great choice. Man, I love hearing you do cards of the week. That's so exciting. I'm so happy we're doing this. <laughs> well, you, you, why don't you tell me your card of the week? Yeah, so I got to miss out last week, and you know now I'm reborn from the ashes like a phoenix. So my card of the week is going to be the best Damon card we've ever gotten, and it is Christy Damon. Not Spencer? Not Spencer or Marcus. Christy. <laughs> no, so for uh, I, I've been having a blast kind of revisiting the Phoenix Mon deck, um, and this Christy Damon is one of those, like when I've – First saw the pieces that were coming out. I was like, oh, the Garudamon's great. Beomon, this tamer is insane. It, sorry, your main phase. If you Digimon with Bird or Avian and it's straight, it's game one memory. It's like they made this card for me. <laughs> and then on play, one of your Digimon gains on deletion. You may play one Beomon from hand or trash. They're literally taking a red deck, giving it all purple abilities. <laughs> but then say. I have the ability to play Gaia Force. <laughs> and what more could a man ask for? I get to play all this cool purple on deletion, recycle Beomons. Beomon gets to warp into Garudamon from this ability. It's only a three drop. The Garudamon plays it for free. I get it all it's, in one it's, deck. It's a lot off your Christmas list. It's a lot off my Christmas Too bad it's not meta, but that's okay. Um, so this is my card of the week is Chrissy Damon. Um, obviously, Marcus is the best Damon, right? Spencer is uh, probably the worst. Sorry, man. Um, <laughs> but this Chrissy is really cool. I that really like... ain't bad. I really like how what they're doing in this game of giving us these tamers and characters that we kind of never thought we would get. You know, so I cannot wait till maybe we get like the main character from Cyber Sleuth. That was a big favorite game of mine. So, uh, or, or not a uh, Cyber Sleuth. Um, shoot, the other. Because yeah, we did. We did get the main character off Cyber Sleuth. Uh, sorry, the uh, the Alpha Mon Tamer, the, the the girl that ran ran the detective agency. That's the Oda. one. Yeah, whatever her name is, the one that's secretly Alpha Mon in disguise. That's the one that's like we can get that. We can get all these tamers to do these cool things, but. All right, that's it, guys. I mean, what a great week. 
Everybody jump in the comments. Let Basil know uh, you're sending him his best regards for regionals. We cannot wait to hear all the decks you played, your text, your deck profile. We're going to get it all. We cannot wait. As always, like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't, send this to all of your friends because we want everybody to watch us every week. And let us know in the comments how much you miss Jesse, and we'll get him back on <laughs> here soon. So take it easy, guys. Thank you so much.